Hey guys, before we get started, I just wanted to let you guys know I've been wearing my makeup for about 11 hours now. Um, I don't feel like retouching it just to take it off. It seems kind of pointless. So don't mind my eyeshadows have kind of creased and transferred and it's a little bit of a mess. Not that I ever need an excuse for my makeup to look like shit, but I know some of you just can't help yourselves to comment on it. <laughs> As always guys, there will be timestamps below if you care to skip ahead to any certain area. This is a long video and I'm going to be explaining each step and why I do it and alternatives to those steps. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So um, we're all tight zoomed in today because tonight is going to be my PM skincare routine. I think it's better to be zoomed in like this so you guys can see the condition of my skin. Um, I know you can't see very much of me. Some of you probably actually prefer it that way, the less the better, right? So like I did in my um, AM routine, I'm gonna list the steps here on the side of the screen. Hopefully I have room on the side of my face for that. Hope you guys enjoyed your holidays with your friends and family, um, whatever you may celebrate. As always, the standard disclaimer applies. This is my skincare routine. You do not need all of these products. Find something that works for you. There are products in all price ranges. I am 35 years old and my skin type is dry. So if you're looking to treat similar skincare conditions than I have, products like these will work for you. If you're 20 years old and oily, a couple of these products may work for you, but more than likely, it's best to find products that are aimed towards your skin type. I use a few medical grade skincare products still, not daily, maybe once a week now. Um, I did complete a few full cycles of the Obagi New Derm system that I got um, from a dermatologist at a med spa. You do need a prescription for medical grade skincare if it is truly medical grade. Not buy from online if they're not authorized dealers. And technically, they shouldn't be selling online unless you have a prescription that they need to verify. You never know what the product is. It could be expired, it could be knockoff. There is a huge knockoff you know, market coming from overseas. Keep those things in mind, buyer beware. Medical grade skincare is obviously a lot more powerful, um, stronger ingredients than you can buy over the counter or for retail in like Sephora, Ulta, places like that. I haven't used medical grade skincare with the exception of three products that I will show you in about four years. So I was able to maintain the results that I got from reversing the severe sun damage that I had on my skin with over-the-counter products. I think a lot of over-the-counter skincare has gotten significantly better um, in the past couple years. Another disclaimer, if you have acne, I recommend seeing a doctor 100%. You would think that it's going to be a lot more expensive, but with the cost of a few of the products I have behind me, you can pay to go into a dermatologist even if you don't have insurance, and you can get prescriptions for antibiotics or a million other things that will help your skin. There are so many causes of acne that it's hard just to sit online and pinpoint what yours could be. It could be allergies, it could be from your diet, it could be hormonal, you know, it could just be typical surface causes. So I would recommend always going to see a professional. And even if you don't have acne, I think it's good to get your skin diagnosed by a professional to tell you what your needs are. That's what I did, it gave me a better understanding of my skin and what my needs are, and from there I was able to take what they taught me and build a skincare routine that works for my skin because I know what I'm lacking, I know what to stay away from, I know what I need. Medical grade skincare is extremely expensive. Um, in general, those Obagi kits I was doing, I believe were like $580 per kit. Uh, granted, you did get the, all the range of products in there, but since you have to buy it all at once, it's a little suffocating. <laughs> Keep in mind as well, when you guys go to a med spa, they're going to typically try to sell you whatever may be on special, whatever quota they have to hit. So always look at what they're recommending, if it's like something like Obagi or anything like that. Take a look at what you're using, ask for samples if they give it, and see what works for you and what doesn't, and make sure it's not like promising you, you know, the world and not delivering. When I first went into the doctor's office and I had this chemical peel and they were telling me about this system, I think there were five, there were five steps in the system, and honestly, I was like, well, I don't wanna do that, that's so much. Like, who has time for that? And it's so funny because now my skincare is even more steps, like one more step, I think, but I love it. Um, it's so nice when you start seeing results. Like some people talk about that with like the gym. I'm lacking that gene. I'm not someone that really gets into it. 
but when you start seeing results and your makeup lays a lot more smoothly, it's it's worth it to me. And it's time that I'm taking to pamper myself. You know, you can work all day, have a really stressful day at work maybe, and you're trying to do things around the house and chores, and it's time at the end of the night that I get to focus on me and not think about work or anything else, just what my skincare steps are, and it's something that I enjoy. So I worked from home today. It's like that weird week at the end of the year where from the holidays that you're like, not quite sure if you're working, you don't really know what day of the week it is, you're spending time with family. So I'm kind of in pajamas, except I did get some new eyeshadows and I was playing with those. So I kind of went a little heavy on my eye makeup. <laughs> Okay guys, so I just briefly wanna um, tell you what the difference is. So in the AM steps, our purpose really is to cleanse our skin from whatever kind of debris, our face or sweat, you know, that we had during the night. We wanna exfoliate our skin to prep it for um, makeup application so everything just lays smooth. We wanna prep our skin um, with like basically moisturizers and antioxidants, and then we wanna protect our skin with SPF for the rest of the day. Now at night, what we want to do is if you do wear makeup, you're going to want to remove your makeup. Then you're going to want to cleanse your skin. I like to do um, a double cleanse. I like to exfoliate again. Now, listen to your skin. It may be too much for your certain skin type. So always test patch against your jaw. I love exfoliating twice a day um, and my skin handles it well. It is not for everybody. So again, test your skin yourself and see what it tolerates. And then this is the time that you're going to do the majority of your treatments. Um, if you're using retinol, um, any kind of like thicker serums or something that's not gonna lay well underneath makeup, and then you're gonna wanna moisturize and kind of lock it all in to go to bed at night. The first thing I like to do when I'm getting unready is I like to get my hair up out of my face so my hair is not getting wet and I don't get it across my face. Obviously, um, most days I do wear eyelashes, likely not this dramatic for work, but I do wear them pretty often. I'm taking those off and I have an eyelash cubby I bought that I will put those in. I have my skincare and steps laid out behind me so I'm just going to be pulling from there. First thing. If you wear makeup, if you don't wear makeup, I don't think a double cleanse is necessary, but if you do wear makeup, I think it's great to try to remove the surface makeup that you have and then go in with a second cleanse, kind of remove whatever's left behind and that also kind of conditions your skin. I believe this originated in Korean skincare, this double cleansing method. Um, it's genius, I love it. Now, I used to use makeup wipes. I'd use like one makeup wipe and get into bed and that's when my skin wasn't, you know, definitely wasn't in great condition. Now, if you wanna use a makeup wipe as kind of like your initial cleanse to remove your makeup and then go in with um, like your second cleanse, I think that that's all right. But a lot of these makeup wipes have high alcohol content. And if you're someone like me with dry skin, it can really dry you out. And also I'm not like an earthy crunchy person, but I just thought that these were producing so much waste that I it's unnecessary for me. So I do have these on the odd occasion. I run out of balm or something, but um, I don't I don't use these anymore. I would normally go in straight with my balm and just kind of emulsify this over my makeup to remove it. I am wearing heavy eye makeup right now and I don't wanna spread that all over my face. So first what I'm gonna do is go in with an eye makeup remover um, just to kind of take that off. I love this eye facil. This stuff like dissolves anything. I'll typically use this or my Bioderma Sensi Bio. So I use that on my Shiseido facial cottons. Um, don't pull on your eye. Like, look at that. It just like eats it right off. Crazy. Ooh, I look like, I look like a raccoon. It's actually quite terrifying. Now, I go in with this Emma Hardy, this um, Moringa cleansing balm. I love this stuff. I learned about this stuff from Caroline um, and she talked about it. This is a UK brand. I did find some US stockists that I will link below for this, um, but I had bought this previously um, from Cult Beauty and I actually went through my empties and I have two of these that I've completely used up and this is my third. I, you know I like something when I've used it up and repurchased because that's if I even use it up, that normally means I really like it. I've tried this Colleen Rothschild one and I don't like the smell of this and I don't know, it just leaves like a residue on my face. I saw this, um, you know, when that was that heavy push of marketing on um, YouTube and I saw a bunch of gurus talking about it and so I bought it and I just really don't like it. This one, on the other hand, I love it. It has this nice 
nice light orangey scent um i enjoy this now you don't need a balm like this. If you guys want to use like even olive oil or anything to kind of just emulsify that makeup and take it off, that will work. Um, a lot of you guys talk about using coconut oil on your face. Now coconut oil has a um, rating of four, which that's high. That's likely to cause blemishes um, on acne prone skin because it can clog your pores. So just be wary of that if you do have acne prone skin and you're noticing that's an issue. If you've tried it and it's not a problem, carry on. So what I'm gonna do with this, and typically bombs you put on dry skin. So I just take my knuckle and take a little out of there. And then I'm going to take this between my fingertips and emulsify it till it's like a liquid. And then I'm just going to rub this in my skin. Now again, if I didn't have really heavy eye makeup on, like. Typically, I don't. I would have just put this right over my eyes. This doesn't burn. It's not uncomfortable. It's really quite pleasant. I just want to make sure I like to go in over my eyes too and make sure, typically, if I have any mascara on, which, whoops, I do, that I kind of work that off. I feel like Alice Cooper. Do I look like Alice Cooper? This is my basket of washcloths that I discussed in the morning. I keep underneath my sink. And this would have been one from the day, the morning, that I told you I would hang up, um, that I used as a first cleanse. And then I'll come back in and use this again at night before I throw this in for the wash. So now I'm just going to take this that's wet on this fluffy side in here. These sell out really quickly and then they'll come back in stock. So just check back if they're not in stock. I buy these on Amazon in a five pack. I'm obsessed with these things. I really enjoy them. They're really good at taking off all my makeup and they're nice and soft. And then if you need a more rough patch, the other side is a typical microfiber cloth. And I use that sometimes to go over my eyelid area to take off if I have any um, like remaining bits of eyelash glue. Okay, and now what I would do is I would hang this back up and I keep one of these hanging on the inside of my um, bathroom cabinet door. And then in the morning when I go to wash my face again, I'm going to take this one. I'm going to toss it in here. The reason I don't put it right in there when it's wet is I don't want the basket to get rusty or to get moldy or smell funny. And then I'll take a new cloth for the morning. I use a new cloth every single day because those can harbor bacteria and germs and you shouldn't be spreading that around on your face. I heard Sunday Riley makes a really good balm too, but I haven't tried that one yet. Okay, now at night I like to exfoliate my lips. Um, my favorite lip scrub at the moment, I have a couple that I love. I love the Lush Bubblegum Lip Scrub, but this um, Sarah Hap, the Lip Scrub, I love this Midnight Blueberry I've been using um, for the past few months. It's a finer paste than that other one. And now it's the time for my second cleanse. So in this cleanse, really, we're going to take off any remaining bits of makeup that are left behind any kind of like surface grit or residue or anything like that, now's the time to cleanse. As you guys know, I love my Clarisonic. This is the Mia 2. They have a few different devices. The difference between the Mia 1 and, or the original Mia and this one is that the Mia 2 has two speeds, a high and a low. I only ever keep it on the high, so I don't think two speeds are necessary, unless you have extremely sensitive skin, but if you do, I, I don't think that this would be good for you anyway. Maybe something more like the Foreo, the Luna or any of those. I have a whole video on those. I will link below. You guys can check out what works best for you. The original Mia, I believe you can get for $99. Um, and I would wait until like the April sale so you can save some money off. Now, before I got this one, the first one I got to try was the Olay. I think it's called like the Spin Brush or something like that. I picked it up at Walgreens and it was, I think $29.99 and it came with like some skincare stuff and a spin brush. It's battery operated um, and I was using it for quite some time and I really liked it. And so that's what made me step up to this. Cause when I first saw the price on that, I was like, Phew, I'm not spending that. Now I love it and I can't live without it. Infinity Planet sent me this and I've been testing it for quite some time um, to see how it goes. I've been using it in the shower. This is like the body attachment. I don't do codes, so they offered me a code. I don't want a code. So if you guys are interested in this, this is very similar to that Olay Spin Brush. They're both battery operated. Um, you're not gonna be able to recharge this. Perhaps if you have rechargeable batteries, you can put those in there. Um, it has a watertight seal so you can use it in the shower it comes with a few different options it's only like one speed like that the difference between this and this is this is more um like sonic technology that's kind of pulsating and bringing that dirt up this is just surface it's just spinning around if you don't want to buy the hundred dollar you know mia then i believe these are like 29.99 they advertise them 
as like $79.99 or like even $100. And I don't know where Vanity Planet is, but not on this planet. No, this thing is worth the $20 that they're selling it for, nowhere near $70. If you guys want a code on that, just search YouTube and pick your favorite YouTuber that has worked with them and use their code. I was interested in trying to see if I can find less expensive alternatives to my Clarisonic for you guys. If you don't want a cleaning device, you can still go in with your hands on an additional washcloth. I love my Clarisonic. Like there are uh, some people that don't like it. Like I know Caroline doesn't care for them. Um, I, I just love mine. These have been my two favorite nighttime wash face washes. This is the Obaji Sea Cleansing Gel. You don't need a prescription for this. This is out of their C, C line. That's like all vitamin C. And this does have an impressive amount of vitamin C in here. However, one may argue that it's not on your skin that long because you're foaming it and then washing it off. So you're likely not gonna reap a ton of benefits for that. But I do notice my skin to be brighter and this does not dry my skin out when I use this, which is a plus in my book. And then this, this is pronounced, I think Corez or Kors perhaps. This is a Greek skincare line. They sent me a whole mess of their skincare, um, no strings attached, just to try out and see if I like anything. And this was a standout product to me. This is their Greek yogurt foaming cream cleanser and this is available at Sephora. I've been trying to hunt down a really good cleanser that I like at Sephora that's not gonna strip my skin and ever since I stopped carrying the nude line, I've been like crying inside. I don't know when that's coming back, but um, I heard Beauty Counter purchase them and hopefully soon, 2017 they said. But I really like this and this is easier to get than this. Like I can only buy this either from my doctor's office or online and it's like $50 and it takes a while to ship where this I can just run down into Sephora and pick this up. So I have been really liking this. It's important in this step as well is that we use a cleanser that is not going to strip our skin and completely break down that acid mantle that we have. That's a protective barrier that keeps the moisture in and bacteria out. So we wanna make sure that we're not using something super alkaline that's like a bar soap. If you guys are curious on cleansers and pH and all that, I will link my cleansing video below. I would check that out. There are some more drugstore options there for you as well, depending on skin type. Well, I just put a little bit of that cleanser on here and now I'm gonna work in the zones. This is zone one, two, three, four, I'm gonna speed through this so you don't have to be subjected to the weight. <laughs> I'm going to go rinse this off and wash off my face. And now I'm just going to take a microfiber um, cloth that I like and pat my face dry. Now that my skin is completely cleansed, I like to go on with an essence or a toner or some kind of like light hydrator, like liquid hydrator. Back in the day, toning used to really either mean to kind of remove any leftover residue from your cleanser or makeup, or it was to rebalance your skin's pH in preparation for all the next steps you're gonna put on there. In this day and age, most cleansers are properly pH balanced. Not all, but most. So that step is really kind of archaic now in that traditional sense. Now a toner typically applies to any step that's left on your skin that's not washed off. It's kind of like a liquid. I have been using this Makeup Raw Sauce um, for quite some time and I first got the small bottle to test it to see if I like this. Um, this is a Korean skincare brand, and this is 97% maple acer water. It is not like, a, you know, this is kind of just a one trick pony. All it's going to do is moisturize. There is some alcohol in here, that's their preservative, and there's also a tiny bit of fragrance. Since 97% of the formulation is that maple acer water, that only gives 3% to be the other ingredients that follow. It's not high enough of a concentration that would cause me concern. My other favorite toner is this um, DHC CoQ10 toner. This is actually the one I'll use in the morning now. I have an extra empty bottle again. I know I like it when I repurchase this. That you can only buy online. I'm just gonna kind of pat it in my skin. You don't need to use a whole mess of this, just a little bit. It lasts me a long time. I believe this big bottle is $40 though. Um, can you find other products that will do just moisturize as well? Absolutely, um, I like the scent of this. I just, I don't know, I, I like this product. I find myself repurchasing it and coming back to it, so I do like this. Now is the time if you use any eye cream that you would wanna go in with some. I don't use eye cream. I've tried what feels like a bajillion and I've never found one that makes any significant difference. I promise to never try to sell you one. I have under eye fillers because I have deep hereditary bags in my eyes. Um, 
dark circles that came down to about here. It's nothing that an eye cream was going to help. Typically, if you have darkness in this area, it's not from sun damage. It's typically from thin skin and you being able to see the blood vessels underneath your eyes. Some eye creams are able to go in and if you're really dehydrated, kind of, kind of plump that area slightly up so maybe it won't seem as dark. There are some that if you have sun damage and darker circles like that, that some of the ingredients can lighten that. The whole shtick behind eye creams is that it's a lower molecular weight, better able to penetrate the thin skin around your eyes. Again, I feel like a well-formulated skincare cream should be able to be used all over your face. And eye cream is supposed to be a little thicker, um, so it kind of stays where you put it and it doesn't like run down your face and things like that. I've never found one that I like that I believe does anything. It's just a lot of money. Some people have really dry under eyes. Um, again, my lotion corrects all those things for me, so I don't, I don't need a dedicated product to it. But if you do, use it now. Again, the same rules apply for skincare. We wanna go from the thinnest consistency to the thickest consistency. So that way your skin is able to absorb each step. If you use different products, just keep that in mind. Your steps may be different because the consistency may be different. Now at this point in my skincare routine, if I was going to be using my medical grade skincare, this is tretinoin cream. Um, which is an acidic derivative of vitamin A. This is 0 0.05 strength. There are three different strengths to the best of my understanding. You can find places to buy this online. Don't do it. You don't know what's in there. You could cause more harm than good. So basically the Obagi skincare steps that I have kept that I like, and I only use these maybe once a week, sometimes not even, actually mostly not even, I would go in with the clear. This is step three in the system. So I would have used their wash, I would have then toned with their tone. I would have used the clear. Then at night, I wouldn't have used the step four because that's for the day. And then I would go in with their blender cream and my cream mixed together because that's how it's directed to use. A lot of people say you want to use prescription strength. That's Let's basically call that Retin-A, which is a a brand name of it, but more recognizable. You would wanna use that on clean, dry skin. Wait 30 minutes after you have washed your skin because if you put this on and there is any water present on your skin, it will absorb that much deeper and cause more irritation, which this works by causing inflammation in your skin. So it could cause problems. This is hydroquin one. I never say that right. I'll put the word down here. Um, this is a skin lightener for dark spots. They say that this targets the dark spots and gets rid of them. I don't know how how that does that. That's something I'd have to look more into or if it just lightens overall. Um, but I use this when I had that dark spot there and I had a lot of sun damage on my forehead. I very rarely use that now. And this is their blender cream, which has that same ingredient and you're meant to mix this, a little of this with this and spread it all over your face, and then the last step would be your moisturizer. If you use a Retin-A, I would not use like a glycolic acid or anything at the same time of day. Those things normally don't play well because it's too aggressive. You're using one that I would think of more as like a topical exfoliator, and this one that even though you put it topically on, it kind of works from more of the inside out. So I would, I would not mix those two. If you guys want to rotate between your acid and your Retin-A, I would do that on different nights, just so you're not getting too aggressive with your skincare. Now I can use this plus like my good genes or a, any lactic acid because lactic acid is a larger molecule. It works more so on the top layer of your skin. It's not as aggressive as glycolic. If I were to use this mixed with glycolic, the next morning my skin will be red, raw, tight. It's too much for me. You'll be warned on that. And some people's skin do tolerate it well. Um, you can mix multiple. I'm not one of those people and I've known more people than not that prescription strength plus a strong acid is just too much. You can get over the counter like Luna has a form of retinol in there. So this is going to get you there a lot faster than an over-the-counter one. They both do the same thing, except that's gonna take a lot longer. They're a lot weaker. FDA has approved this for acne treatment and anti-aging. It basically speeds up the 21-day life cycle of your skin turning over, so it's constantly turning over, which it's a rough at least a month. I would say about six to eight weeks. My chin here, I was peeling, I was flaky, I was a mess. Um, but then your skin clears up and 
and it's amazing. I didn't have acne, but I wanted to do it for anti-aging and all the sunspots I had. Doctors should tell you when they give you the prescription how to use it, listen to what they say. Sometimes the script will tell you to use this on clean, dry skin. Sometimes this will tell you like in this, this was the fifth step of my skincare, fourth step in that system. And remember to give this about 30 minutes for your actives to work before you go on with your moisturizer or anything else, like let it work. I only do that, I would say maybe even once every two weeks or so. Um, basically, I got my skin to where I wanted it. I had to work up to using the Retin-A. So I worked up from like once a week to twice a week to every other day then to every day and then I got my skin where I wanted it and I just didn't see the need to continually use it. Um, I will use it occasionally but I get similar results now by maintaining by using my acids. If you're using something like an over-the-counter Peter Thomas Roth like a retinol you can totally use that with acids. Um, again, for me, something like this Drunk Elephant TLC, which was too aggressive for me, it really like dried me out and came, gave me kind of bumps. I wouldn't use any retinol with this on my skin type. It'd be too much. I think that might be too much for a lot of people because that's a glycolic. This lactic acid I can use with the Luna. They're actually sold together in that power duo. I was going through, here are my empties because I haven't done an empties video in a while. I have three of these empty and this one is half done already. I always come back to this. I've tried a bunch of others. I just love this. It really plumps my skin. It makes my makeup lay really smooth. I just really enjoy this. The way the bottle reads is that you're supposed to put an oil on and then this. The reason for that is because this has an occlusive in it. It has some silicones in there, which is gonna create almost like a barrier on your face to lock in you know, anything that's underneath it. So if you were to lay this down and then put an oil on top, it's gonna kind of slow the absorption into your skin and you might not get the full benefits from the oil. I've tried it their way. I prefer reversing it and doing it my way. I like to go on with my exfoliator next. So if you have oily skin and you like using the TLC, I would use that now. For me, I'm going to use my Good Jeans just a little like do you guys see how small of an amount and i rub this in this lasts me a long time sometimes like literally i put the smallest little drop on my finger i see some people saying they're going through a bottle a month guys i think you're using too much if you're using that like i don't get me wrong i want to melt my face off the acids are like my favorite they are my favorite <laughs> wanted to look like the guy from indiana jones it's like melting his face off you can use this as a mask and go on really thick, but for the cost, I'm like, nope, just a little works for me. And this bottle, I mean, I've had this quite some time. It's halfway through right now, and I've had this several months. So make sure you're not using too much. For those that are using Vintner's Daughter um, and they want to use it morning and night, now I would use Vintner's Daughter. I use this just in the morning because I love how it lays underneath my makeup. And for those of you that use the Code C15, I went through my empties. I have three of the bottles in here. I really liked this oil, um, but ever since I started using this I get all of the benefits I was getting this and then and then some in that one but I would use your c15 oil now what I like to go in with now is my Sunday Riley Juno oil this is my favorite oil that Sephora sells I have two additional bottles in my empties bag again you know I really like it if I keep purchasing it I'm going to put a few drops on the palm of my hand I'm going to just smooth that over and then I'm gonna rub this on now Again, Sunday Riley states that you should use the oil first, then the good jeans, but I like doing it this way, and I'll tell you why. So when acid goes on, and if you're curious how those work, I'll link my video below, Get Better Skin with Chemical Exfoliation. It'll explain the difference between AHA, BHA, and what's better for what skin type. So how an acid like that works in AHA is it's gonna go on and it's gonna break up those bonds that are holding the dead skin together and allow it to kind of slough off. So in my mind, I think, why would I put an oil and then something that's meant to exfoliate my skin on top of that? Like, I have mixed ideas. Like the oil can kind of like help your skin better absorb the acid that you're gonna put on next. But in my mind, I just think I'd rather exfoliate and then put the oil on that clean skin so my skin can better absorb it. Again, that does have an occlusive in it. So use as directed as they say. Um, I'm just showing you what I do. And if that works better for you, try that. Now, if you were using your Luna, I would use that now instead of the Juno. And I have this other oil, this May Lindstrom, the Youth Dew. 
I use this on the nights that I'm either running really low on my Juno like now and I haven't replaced it or I use this on the night that I'm doing like my whole mud mask treatment. This was extremely expensive. And while I do like it, I like my Vintner's Daughter better. And these are different because this is thicker than this. Um, I just, I don't know, I, I prefer this one. Again, if you're looking for more um, green beauty, you might enjoy this youth do. So basically what the Juno is doing, and again, you can use any oil, is it's getting down some antioxidants for me. This is basically like, I call this like my skin food. Um, it's really just nourishing my skin and I call that that's like a glow in a bottle for me it makes my skin really radiant and now my last step in the actual skincare is to lock everything in with a nice moisturizer you guys know I've been talking about this for what feels like forever my favorite is my little what I call my face cocktail which is some of the belief true cream moisturizing balm mixed with a few drops of my fresh seaberry oil this is not antioxidant, this is not treatment, this isn't gonna do anything besides moisturize your skin, which since I'm dry, that's what I really need. I typically don't go for creams in pots because if there's antioxidants or certain ingredients like that, the air will contaminate it, break it down, rendering it pretty useless in a short amount of time. However, this does not have ingredients like that to break down. All this is is a moisturizer. It doesn't claim to be anything else, and this does an excellent job of moisturizing my skin. I've gone through my empties. I have four empties plus this one that I'm currently using. It's safe to say this is my, I've never purchased a moisturizer like this, and this is just since the last time I've done an empties video. And I go through about two or three three jars of these for every bottle of this. Make sure if you do get this to try that you get the moisturizing balm, not the aqua balm. The aqua balm is better for those that have oily skin. It's like a blue watery gel consistency. For me, I don't like it. It made my skin sticky and didn't really hydrate. So what I do is I put a blob of that on the back of my hand and then I take three drops of this oil and then I'm gonna emulsify it together on the back of my hand. And I'm gonna be a greasy, shiny mess when I go to bed. But when I wake up, my skin has absorbed everything and my skin is so smooth. You guys are in your 20s, this is overkill. You don't need all this stuff. Don't be spending, you know, $100 on a face oil. It's not, I mean, unless it's something that you really want to do, but it's, I think it's pretty pointless. I don't think that your skin needs it at that age. And again, if you have acne, consult a doctor they're gonna be able to do way more for you than over-the-counter skincare. So as always, rubbing my face turns me into a tomato face. I always bring this down my neck and uh, typically I would bring this on my chest, but it's not that kind of video. Now, if you have acne prone skin, this will likely be too heavy for you. You still need moisture. I would use the Drunk Elephant Marula Oil. Um, this has no irritants if you have really sensitive skin because this has comfrey root leaf extract in there which could irritate very sensitive skin. And this does have a small amount of fragrance really low down on the ingredient list. If you're in your 20s and you really wanna have something that's moisturizing, I would use this oil. You get a nice big bottle, 1.6 ounce is for $50 um, and it will last you a long time. I think that that is a good moisturizing oil. If you want to spend more money and you have sensitive skin, I would get the Drunk Elephant Marula Oil. Um, it's nice and light. It absorbs quickly. I actually didn't care for this at night because I like a thicker oil, but I have been using this during the day underneath my makeup sometimes. So last but not least, I moisturize my lips and I have like a whole mess of my favorite balms right here that I'm gonna show you, ones that I use the most often. Um, so I scrubbed my lips. If my lips were extremely dry, I would do this Kaplan MD Lip 20 mask. I really enjoy this. Um, it has a nice minty tingle, and I mean, it promises that it's gonna, like gonna really plump. It hydrates, which if your lips are dehydrated, it can certainly look a little more plumped, but it makes my lips feel nice and smooth after. Another one I really like that came with my lip scrub is the Sarah Hap the Lip Slip. This smells kind of like um, bubble gum. I think it's bubble gum. That's what it reminds me of anyway. This has a light little shimmer to it and I really enjoy this one. I think um, one of my favorite balms is this by Terry Rose de Balm. I have this Sicily lip balm. Um, you know, I feel torn on this. My lips feel nice when I use this. It's more of like a Vaseline consistency. Um, I got it to try it because there was like a lot of hype around it and it's $74. I damn near choked. Is this worth $74? I don't. 
I don't think so. Um, if you have it and you want to spend it and feel like fancy, then knock yourself out. It'll definitely hydrate your lips. But do I think it's anything that's going to like change your life? No. I like this Drunk Elephant Lippy. It is really big though, so it's not really good for the day because you'll kind of get it all over your face. But I bring this when I'm snowboarding too or just at night again. I like that one. This one is one of my favorite from Sephora. This is their Sephora Just um, Super Nourishing Lip Balm. It does have beeswax in it. It's just a nice light lip balm. Um, it actually feels like it's nourishing my lips. I do like that. In this one from the Glossier, this is their bomb.com. That's nice. Aquaphor is amazing. Um, I bring this snowboarding sometimes too. And I also really love the Bite Agave Lip Mask. Um, this one is a thicker consistency. I find it stays on the longest out of any of these I've just mentioned. My face, as you can see, is shiny right now and it is kind of like wet feeling. I do have pets and their hair typically irritates me anyway. Like if you ever see me kind of like scratching my face or something, it's because their hair kind of like, I might be slightly allergic, I'm not sure, but I mean, it's never been, I'm not giving up my pets and it's never anything more than just like itchy. I would go to bed in about 10 minutes after I've done this. Um, some people have told me that like hair and stuff will tickle them and stick to their pillowcase. Um, I would give yourself some more time before you go to bed to allow your skin to kind of absorb that. If you guys haven't watched my video on face oils and exfoliators, I would watch that. It will give you an understanding of how your skin is going to be able to adjust to skin oils. The two things I can't live without in my skincare routine are acids and face oils. I love those. Those have really changed my skin for the better. Those videos will dive deeper into each one of those categories if you guys have any questions. I know this seems like a lot of steps, but I was talking through them, so it took a lot longer than when I'm just normally doing it. It probably takes me, um, I mean, if I'm not using my Retin-A and giving it like the 30 minutes to absorb, it probably only takes me like five minutes to get ready for bed. I hope you guys all have a very safe and happy, healthy new year. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys, and I will see you next time. Bye.